All right, sucker shit. I was thinking, man. Uh oh. I was, I, it, and it really it hit me about the show. Uh, we do tell stories, uh, but when we we talk about things, a lot of stuff that we do is counterculture, and it seems like it's a uh, uh, counterintuitive and against narratives. So we try to back them up with facts, data, statistics, studies, surveys, etc. That's a reflection of who we are in our personal lives. So I was having a conversation mm. <clears throat> with a young lady <laughs> and I was giving her these stats and it came from the CDC, right? Okay. And she started telling me about her uncle. <laughs> and I was like, the CDC don't talk to your uncle Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is this is like we can't have a general conversation about black the black community and relationships okay and then you talk about your uncle charlie so i don't care if your uncle charlie is charlie wilson <laughs> charlie tuna <laughs> charles in charge charles barkley or charlie damn brown okay if you is talking about your uncle you want some sucker shit. <laughs> Date. Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> Charlie Parker. Created Bebop. That should, that should count for something. Uh, <laughs> oh, that, no. That's a good story. <laughs> she was like, well, my Uncle Charlie and my auntie. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about your uncle? <laughs> uh, I put it. Yo, welcome back again to Skinny Black's Lounge. You know, my name is Rob uh, KKK, K, not KKK. Yeah. My name is Rob, AKA Skinny Black. Um, to my left. Rennie. Yeah. Okay, to his left. JT, the period is silent. Hi, mom. Don't edit that fuck up. And uh, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> And, and sitting somewhere in these couple of seats, we got the ghost of Lebo. Lee! Yeah, okay, oh man. So we got a couple of things we wanna dive into today, um, this, this evening. And so um, let's start out with um, BIPOC, black indigenous people of color. And so I hear this term all the time, right? I hear it quite frequently in the work that I do and um and, and it started to bother me and you know we've had some conversations i want to share it and put it on uh skinny black so when we talk about some of the social justice things that are happening in the world um when we talk about any type of justice or equity that uh, conversations that happen in the united states especially um very frequently this term bipoc comes up black indigenous people of color mm -hmm. and what doesn't sit right with me is the fact that the things that we're talking about, it's the black people who are catching the most hell. And indigenous, I gotta say. Black and indigenous are disproportionately catching hell more than, the, more than those other people of color. So when you say BIPOC, you are already from the jump, from the get go, you flatten the issues for everybody across the board when there needs to be some specificity and some attention given to black and indigenous folks, especially black folk. If we talk about just sheer numbers and we'll talk about LA. So I just want to get y'all opinions on that. Um, see how I'm sitting with y'all. Um, we can speak directly to the, um, the who is more adversely affected in that space. And then we can, from that, we can jump on to the who is putting in the most work to actually effectuate change in those areas. So what we have is um, black people historically um, organizing, um, uh, trying to effectuate change through protest, through uh, social uh, 
social change um, via all of these uh, different means of peaceful means of protest. I mean, we're not out here uh, tearing things up for the most part. You know what I mean? We should we should do it more considering <laughs> what, what's happened to us. But, you know, Howard Bryant likes to say what change ever happened without protests. Right. When did the power structure, white male society ever cede power without protest? Like, when did they just say, you know what, man, you know, you guys have been some really, really, you know, <laughs> obedient darkies. You know, let me let me throw you a bone. Like, that's never, ever, ever happened ever. In, in the history of histories. Has the people who were in the power relinquished any of that? Hmm. And we can look at it in the in the most obvious sense. We can go right back um, to the election. You know, the 2020 presidential election. We can go right back to that space where black men voted in the 90th percentile Democrat, and then we went to 86%, right? 6%. Did you see the 6% growth in black men who voted uh, uh, Republican or, or Trump? There's no, no one really looks at, identifies that data. Forget that black women had a 6% reduction also, with went from like 98 to 92. Forget that. But let's really talk about the uh, the people of color aspect of that portion of that data, because let's talk about the 33%, 33% Asian that voted Republican and Trump completely against their interests. You know, let's talk about the 37% Latino that voted against their own interests. No one says anything about that. And yet at the same time, those very same people will pull that by POC card slash minority card when it's convenient for them to slide into that space created through our sacrifice. Mm. But did they vote against their interest? Actually, no, they did not vote against it. They're using both sides of the coin to benefit them and playing preferred minority status and wielding that against us via the structure. So they're playing right in the line in their part, doing exactly what's most beneficial to them. So you would be exactly correct. You sound a lot of, a lot of Asian folks uh, thought they had honorary uh, white status till Stop Asian Hate came out a couple the, weeks back. Till the Kung Flu came? Yeah, that, yeah, until all that hit. And then all of a sudden, oh, hey, you know, it's not just me buying a, a soda at your liquor store. You know, I'm just saying, I, you know, I, what do you call it? BIPOC? BIPOC. BIPOC, whatever. BIPOC, Tupac, all right, whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah, popcorn. I don't, it don't make no difference. This is just the latest iter iteration of anything but black. Or let me hitch my struggle or my, my whatever thing to this wagon that's already been established, right? Um, all of a sudden, America was a great place to become an immigrant after the civil rights movement. No doubt. Wasn't nobody hopping on boats and planes when people was catching hell in them streets. Nobody wanted to catch the, this smoke. No, the, I, listen, Look, I check looked the data. Up, yeah. Check the data. Check the data. Check I looked, the data after I looked at that film of the uh, Edmund Pettus Bridge. It looked real black and white up there. <laughs> Whole lot of black. Yeah. They was like, damn, these niggas getting eight ass what? We got another 10 years, we coming. <laughs> And then all of a sudden now, whatever, now we on BIPOC, right? Right. And that's not to say that people don't have their issues, people don't have their struggles, people don't have their things they go to, but it's so easy to hitch that wagon, right? Mm -hmm. To the struggles of black folks that have already been established, that's already been the movement, that were here first. Now I don't have no problem with our indigenous brothers and sisters riding with us not at all right but it's a whole lot of other folks that want to get on and off but here's the issue i've been black my whole life i can't stop so when you decide that this doesn't benefit you mm. then you're gonna jump off the wagon mm. all right but when you need some backup right you're calling 
you're calling us. You're calling the people who only had equal access in theory to education for 57 years. In theory, not, not in practice, in theory. Because the three of us here at this table are old enough to go on to de facto segregated schools. Well, I mean, you know, it's like those people that, that quote uh, Dr. King, you know, content of your character versus color skin, but they don't quote Dr. King, who was also for universal basic income. <laughs> mm. He was also anti-war, mm. right? Uh, he, he was he was he was income in, in, income equality. Now, I'm not saying I support all that stuff, but I recognize all the things that that man was. I just don't use one quote for my own purposes, right? And that's what that BIPOC is. If BIPOC was true unity, okay, and he and he came out with an album, I rock it, <laughs> <laughs> all right. But that album ain't coming out. <laughs> well, and, and here's the 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 crazy irony of it all. Did you did you want to finish that point? No, yeah, that was it. I, I just want to <laughs> just just point out the crazy irony of it all. To your point, as far as like when immigration, when we had the immigration boom, 1968, right? So right after all the quote unquote great society laws and shit, right? Um, Here's the thing. Here's the irony of it all. If we solve the black shit, everybody should be. Everybody good. benefits from it. Because what's happening is, from the hundreds of the hundreds of years that um, that that white white body folk was shitting on black folks, they they were practicing like a motherfucker, right? So now, when other folk start catching this heat. Because more of them are here now after 1968. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh shit, man, we need to get our shit. Well, actually, if you focus on the black shit, all this other shit might clear it for you. For instance, bilingual education all falls under the Civil Rights Act. It didn't exist until the Civil Rights Act allows for that to come forward. Uh, all of the disabled mm -hmm. uh, person legislation. Mm -hmm all falls under the Civil Rights Act. Now, Equal protection. In, its, in its inception, was that the goal? Was that what they were thinking? Were they trying to be BIPOC when those were created? Nah. nah, not at all. But everybody benefited from it and we benefited from it the least, the least. Okay, so, so what we're saying is BIPOC is a uh, Folks have learned to run the uh, white women game on being a minority. Mm. Number one beneficiaries of affirmative action. Mm. White women. Uh, I, I would invite people to read uh, We Were Her Property mm. um, so you can learn about white woman slave ownership. They act like they wasn't packing lunches for the lynchings in the civil rights movement and taking the kids with them. And every racist, segregationist, murderer had a white mama. And if the woman is the first teacher in the home, what were they teaching? Mm. Throw the rock, hide your hand. And when these benefits come out, uh, we are uh, minorities. And I've seen the most staunch white womanists stand in the streets and yell for their rights and then take that home to their husband well, and keep their family going. So now they doubled up on your black ass. And if they were really, really down, for equal rights, why did they kill ERA? Why is it still short of being amended in the number of states for it to become an amendment? Why is it not the 28th? Well, part of the problem yeah. is, is folks listening to us think you talking about baseball, talking about ERA. <laughs> <laughs> because, because uh, you know, we know every uh, thing that happened on all 18 loving hip hops, but we don't know what's happening to our people, but continue. Yeah, that's it. That's the point. I'm, I'm just saying. Well, well, and to your point, uh, the percentages of white women who voted for Trump and then in, voted for Trump in, the, in November and then was part of the largest women's marches worldwide in January. Well, that's my side note. Just just a little pet peeve. <laughs> Race is a social construct. Mm -hmm. OK, okay. granted. But you white motherfuckers never forget you white. Hmm. Never. <laughs> it's a social construct that y'all made. Yeah. And right? And you forget from. that part of the sense. Yeah. You made social it. Social construct and social contract that you're holding everyone to. Yeah. It's it's a contract. It is it is the the law of the land. 
you know it is like you could they could say whatever they want oh critical race theory they don't even know what critical race no, theory, no, theory no. is they have no, no idea what the definition of it is but you know what i know about critical race theory i know if my wife and my daughter go to the emergency room even if they had universal health care even if they were guaranteed health care when they walked in there they were going to get less care and will be treated with less regard than a white child and a white woman when they walk in there. You can't legislate that out. You can create as many benefits as you want, but there's white is still going to white on top of that. Hey man, black people ain't giving up red rooster and Lowry's and white people ain't giving up being white. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, next topic. <laughs> First season is all reference. <laughs> hey, at least you didn't talk about slap your mother.